Flanagan's Bar in historic Park City, Utah. We welcome you to come chat with us as well. Previous home to a young woman who was murdered out of jealousy. The staff have sensed her presence. And then we saw someone coming down. And possibly that of something more angry as well. And instantly we thought someone from there threw the glass, like, with, with strength at us. I'm like, what? Dr. Ghost Hunter's investigation, Flanagan's Bar, Park City, Utah. You're recording, right? Yeah. There was definitely a man talking out here. We are a group of investigators. And I didn't even turn it on, Skeptics. FYI, and it's on again. It's in the middle of nowhere. And one that's a bit empathic. I think that I'm too empathic. Room was upset that we were ghost hunting. Join us in our adventures of diagnosing the mysteries of the paranormal. Jason, look at that shirt. It's my uniform. Yes, sir. Just in time for investigation tonight. That's right. It's look official. At the, look at the quality. Thanks for making the shirts. It's official. Just a couple of normal guys walking in with the normal hotel luggage. Nothing weird to see here. Is this haunted room actually moving? Stretching. <laughs> Cut. Sit down for some dinner. Do you see the mirror up there? Oh, fuck. Do you believe that mirrors can be a portal into another realm? The mirror scared me. The rocking chair is definitely haunted. Maybe. You fucker. Every time I talk about them, they have a serious like connection to her and they don't want anything to get messed up. Right in front of the portal. <laughs> I've never seen this happen before. What? The regular Coke? Oh my god. It's refreshing. <laughs> Cut to Jason levitating. <laughs> Meanwhile, the grown ups. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Sarah's prepping for our investigation. Sarah, how long did it take you to make each of these shirts tonight? About three hours. About three hours. And for one lucky person who comments below, you're going to make another one as a giveaway. Yep. Yes. Sitting in the heart of what once was a mining town and now is historic Park City, Utah, Flanagan's Irish Pub and Restaurant is the site of our investigation. Named after Father Flanagan, a Catholic priest who took in orphan Charles Kenworthy, Flanagan's has been in ownership by owner John Kenworthy since 2009. John, who is the grandson of Charles, tributes the name to the bar to the kindness of Father Flanagan. Recently celebrating our 13th wedding anniversary in Park City, Utah, Sarah and I stumbled into Flanagan's for a drink and a little karaoke. Yep, that's Sarah. She's actually an incredible singer. She even sang on stage with Kristen Chenoweth. Yeah, she's pretty famous. Anyway, while sitting at the bar, Sarah decided to ask the bartender whether or not Flanagan's was haunted. We started to hear some stories, contacted Flanagan's, and that's how we ended up here. In 1892, 17-year-old Hope Daisy Fueling lived with her family in what is now known as Flanagan's on Main. Hope, better known as Daisy, had a sweetheart named Louis Paradise. However, Daisy's family including Uncle Patsy Trotman in particular, disapproved of Paradise. Paradise had prearranged plans to go with Daisy on a stroll along the train tracks and didn't plan to break them. Trotman followed the couple and flew into a murderous rage upon seeing Paradise sling his arm around Daisy. Trotman was believed you to have tried understand. to have shot Paradise. However, he missed hitting Daisy and killing her instantly. He then pulled a gun upon himself, dying a short time later. Liar. The spirit of Daisy and possibly others are thought to still roam the property of this historic Irish pub. Staff members report feeling as though they are not alone. He touched him and then he felt her breath. Seeing objects move. It fell, but with so much strength. And I said, yes, there's a ghost here. And even seeing full body apparitions of who they believe to be Daisy. That's us. And then we saw someone coming down. And but I think she's like a, she's a good like spirit. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think it, it, she was like. It was like a warning, you said. A warning of like. I really feel that he's here too. Like, because uh, there's a board. All right, Jason, we just got a tour from the owners of Flanagan's. We're gonna go back and get the equipment, but um, sounds like the spirit of Hope Daisy. Hope Daisy? I think so. Hope Daisy. Um, sounds certainly not malicious, but certainly still has a presence in what used to be her home before she was murdered. Yep. Let's see what we can find. We want to bring the staff with us along on this investigation not only for further insight, but hopefully to ease their fears that the working environment that they live in, although can be startling, is hopefully completely safe. With that being said, let's begin our investigation. Daisy, my name is Sarah, and this is my friend Jamie. And we're just here, we wanted to talk to you for a little bit, um, but we don't want to be disrespectful. And if you would like us to leave, we absolutely will. But we're just here because the people who work here want to know more about you, and they also want people to hear your story and that's what we're here to do. So if you'd like to talk to us, you can touch that REM pod or you can talk to us through any of the recording devices. Um, if you'd like to show yourself, that would be great. I would ask her if she's happy, you know, because it's just weird to be, you know, here and being here for like, hundred plus years. Probably by herself, we'll know. I mean, we think she's not by herself. So that would be my question, I think. Daisy, are you here with us? Given the slow activity down in the bar, we decided to head upstairs near the bathroom on the main floor. Bianca previously had an experience where she tried to get out of the bathroom and felt as though something was holding her in. We pick up with an EVP session outside of that restroom. The main floor of the restaurant, and you just felt a chill on your hand, correct? Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. So, Daisy, are you here with us? Did you just make the, the temperature go cold? That's the door opening. And closing. There was a time that Bianca was coming out of the restroom and she felt someone hold the door closed when she was trying to open it. Was that you? telling Annie is just like I think that I'm too empathic that like a room was upset that we were ghost hunting sometimes you get more activity when I'm gone you feel so? yeah <laughs> but I think sometimes I don't like that yeah. feeling as though her presence may be pushing away any spirits Sarah decides to head back to the hotel for the first time during the investigation she's been very open about her abilities definitely proud of her for that but as we pick up downstairs, we try to decide what we can do to call out the spirit of Daisy or anyone else who might be residing in the basement of this bar. On the floor of the bar, we have two known photos that we have of Hope Daisy fueling. Surrounding those photos, we have an EMF trip wire. Each individual light acts as its own EMF detector. There are several lights that stay on, and I suspect that this is due to electrical activity under the floorboards. With the exception of a few intermittent EMF hits, the activity is quite slow. Jason and I begin to wonder whether or not the spirit of Hope Daisy may not necessarily like two older men that she's unfamiliar with coming into her bar. Jason and I decide to step into the back room while Jamie and the rest of the bar staff continue to investigate. So Jason, whole lot of nothing. 
I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are, but from where we've been downstairs to the bar, upstairs, you even stayed downstairs, tried to do an EVP session. Nothing. There was nothing for us. Yeah, I didn't have any activity that that I noticed or recorded. Did you? We cut our cameras as well, just in case Daisy is a bit hesitant with everything new that's going on inside the bar. Jamie and the rest of the staff from the bar stay in the bar area to try and make communication. We have one single background video camera and the audio of the ghost tube app, which was used for communication. What you're about to hear spanned over 45 minutes in attempts in communication with Daisy. They're here, but it's just us, you know? You know us. You, you see us every day here. And we're friends. We know you're good. We can also speak Spanish. You're used to Spanish because everybody speaks Spanish here, you know? And I think, I think you know Spanish too. <laughs> and it can't hurt to try. They Run now. Run now? <laughs> Where? <laughs> um, it just said run now. Yeah. Run now. Like corre ahora. Sí, sí, sí. Ya sé qué significa poder ir. Right now. Porque, porque quieres que corra? Ah, because I was talking about the jungle. Well, and then yes, the green light. Now to the blue. Tenemos que correr entonces. Enciende las lucecitas. Estamos en peligro. Verde, sí. You won't understand. Oh my God, estamos en peligro. ¿Por qué no lo voy a entender? Lo quiero entender. Tu tío es malo. Verde. Find me. ¿Dónde te encuentro? Danos una señal si estás aquí con nosotros. It's not easy. Pruébalo. Inténtalo. All right, Jamie. Jason and I um really had nothing going on you were in the main part of the bar with bianca and the staff mm -hmm. seemed to be getting a fair bit of activity through the ghost tube app what was your sense of what was happening before, when you guys were in the room with us, there was nothing happening. And as soon as you left, then it started feeling like something was happening or they were feeling more antsy or something. I don't really know how to describe that. And, but she wasn't getting very many responses at first until she mentioned that she normally spoke Spanish while she was at work. I see. And so that's when I said, well, talk to her how, how you would normally talk to her, you know, just make, be normal, be you. And that's when we started getting more responses from all uh, like the lights and the phone and everything. And then they even started saying that they're, they were feeling her and to the point where they got up to go look for her somewhere up the stairs. They ran up the stairs. Oh, no kidding. We didn't capture that. That's yeah. what we have. Yep. Based on their reactions, I felt like something was happening. There was more wow. there was more happening once you guys left the room. I mean, it makes sense, right? We always get this thought, or at least I get this thought in my mind that if a place is haunted, there's going to be activity while we are there asking mm -hmm. for it to be active. And that's just not the way it's gonna be. Right. And so sometimes it's important to to realize that these people at one time were and still are human too. Right. So we stepped out. Ten minutes or so, they've had significant activity. We can hear all the ghost tube and it appears as though the tree light is lighting off as well. So we're just we're hanging out. It's getting hurt. That's what happens. But that's something else. 
anything else is between her and us. Liar. Okay. Liar. Liar. That's right on there. What is that? What? No te he mentido. Para saber cómo eres. Back off. But every time we go in there, the activity stops. Yeah. We had that figure in the doorway. It was there. As right. Soon as you got close to it. It stops. Yes, it stops. So something's going on here. I don't know what. So. We finish up the evening with an investigation to the back storage room where Bianca had heard rumors that perhaps one of the bodies was stored there back over 100 years ago. For this component of our investigation, we'll bring out a new piece of technology featured on Amy's Crypt and produced by GhostTube. It's the Seer app. This is claiming to be the world's first AI ghost hunting tool. Using cutting edge technology of artificial intelligence, it uses the same features as GhostTube, but then generates an AI image that you can see in real time. If you'd like to see Jason and I do a ghost lab video on this new piece of equipment, please comment in the comments below. This device is set up in a way where you wear a headset with your phone inserted into a slit in front of your eyes. The phone will record outward to show what you would be seeing if you didn't have the headset on. But additionally, you'll be able to see any images that may pop up through the ghost detection device within the app. I'll overlay this onto the video so that you can see what I'm seeing in real time. She's, she's, well, yeah, she's here. It's, she's great. Like, you yeah. know, she speaks both languages. Daisy, aquí estoy. Um, pienso que estás aquí atrás. No sé si sea cierto, pero dame, um, dame una señal si estás aquí o estoy cerca de ti. Pero, she's, she's seeing something come through. It's a set of eyes. Um, like peacock eyes looking at me. Um, estás aquí? Dame, dame una señal si estás aquí. The eyes are blue. Oh my gosh, I asked her before what color her, her eyes were. What'd she say? She didn't say anything. These eyes look blue and they have a green light in them. Tienes los ojos azules, ¿verdad? Los tienes igual que yo. There's two of them looking at me from above. Two people. Hazle una señal con, con la mano o, o míralo. There's bright colors around her, red, like down below, and now it just faded away. ¿Estás aquí? What could? Puedes hablar. Ellos me van a traducir. Y nos podemos comunicar. Here comes another image. Can't quite there's a, a tall figure standing on top of stairs es looking down at me. That's the um, one. Está tu tío ahí contigo, verdad? El que está en las escaleras es tu tío. Yeah, uh, ya no te puede hacer nada. The dark ojos. figure. There's multiple. Oh my God, they could be trapped. Háblame, por favor. Then faded away. Oh, that. Knowing her history just gave me a lot of chills. 
My whole phone no, skip. is completely frozen. Is she is she making it so you can't use your phone? No, it just shut down. <laughs> She's no está what was that? that uh, happens a lot it? actually. Like no, equipment stops yeah, working yeah, and yeah, batteries yeah. die suddenly and this thing is it needs to be like rotated, it didn't rotate. Mm. It looked to me like there was a figure with maybe short hair or bald wearing a dark something. It looked like he was standing on either stairs because they were like this. Mm -hmm. It could have been tracks. Like mm. railroad tracks. Oh, f That's him there. Did someone just touch the rim pod? No. No. It's going off by itself. The rim pod's going off on its own. Right as you're talking about Can him. Can you show it? Yes. It was, it's was it tracks? Was I seeing tracks? Yes, she's here. I... Were you trying to show me the moment that you were shot? And how you died? You can show us. Okay, Jamie, diagnosis of the place. You've been on the fence our last few investigations, <laughs> leaning more towards the, the edge of paranormal being real. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. Obviously, I don't. I'm on the fence because I've never had an experience myself. Yeah. So it's hard for me to say definitively, yes, we can communicate with people who have, you know, passed on, whatever that means. I believe that other people believe that that is real and that they've had experiences. It's just hard for me to say that I believe because I've never had one, but this is the most action we've ever had. This is the most um, engaging anything we've had, whether it's the equipment working. Flanagan's or, here. Yeah, Flanagan's. I feel like- It's my mind that I you would feel, say that. I feel that, yeah. Just because of, I think it was more the people that we were with and just how they were like i think i was feeding off of their energy because wow. they were so engaged and excited and and you know when we went back into that back room after this you know right. when all of yeah. us were in there and everything like kind of went crazy for a minute and it stopped and then right. they were like she's gone we don't feel her anymore that's true and we've never had that experience before. None of us have felt a uh, presence. We've heard things, you've had things like touch you, but we've right. never felt that right. feeling of a presence before. And they could feel it. And I believed that they could feel it. Wow. What a turn of events. Yeah. Seriously for this. Uh, Jason and I, we were just talking. We both got the sense that, you know, they probably felt something was there. We didn't get that. And so I think for you to say that mm -hmm. really means something. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Any final thoughts for Flanagan's? I would love to go back and I would love to have them go with us again. They were, they were a fun group of people. So my diagnosis based on what I saw and experienced, I didn't see or experience any real evidence to indicate it's haunted, but that was just my experience. Yeah, and certainly diagnosis for me, there's something there that simply didn't want to talk to you and me. And maybe in the future, we'll be able to go back and see it. Again, we can't thank the ownership and the staff enough for letting us into their bar and pub. Yes, thank you for giving us the time and availability to see your establishment. Yeah, it was, it seemed pretty intense at times and really um, like they really were communicating with something and they really felt it they kept getting chills and feeling like there was a presence and um you know coming and going watching us so it feels like yeah they, they really felt like something was there well, you feel, yes you are safe i'm not gonna say what Give you want me to say <laughs>